Today, we're actually gonna step away from the clinical side of things a little bit, and we're gonna look at the NFL. Let's talk about these guardian caps that we're seeing in the NFL players. Hey there, I'm Dr. Mark. So I've worked with almost exclusively concussion for the past five years. I've helped clear over 500 athletes from professional ice hockey players to NCAA swimmers, all the way to teachers and entrepreneurs. So on this channel, we talk about concussion rehab, getting over your symptoms, and just getting you back to work, sport, school, or your regular life. Let's talk about what you actually need to know about these guardian caps. If you're unfamiliar, these are lightweight soft shell covers that go over the player's helmets. And the whole goal is if we put this cover over, can we reduce the force and can we reduce the potential damage that might cause concussions? Can we reduce concussions by putting the soft shell cover over? At the time of my recording this, we've already seen Jonathan Taylor and several other Colts. We've seen James Daniels of the Steelers, the Steelers, not the Steelers, and we've seen other NFL players wearing these guardian caps. And many of the comments when we see on social media around these guardian caps are polarized. Like, go figure. We seem to have this camp over here and this camp over here. And one camp is saying, why would you do that? That's ridiculous. That's so silly that, you know, it looks goofy. And then you've got this other camp going like, football's barbaric. I'm so glad that these people are finally considering their futures and their brains like good for you hurrah and we've got this like spectrum over here and let's talk about what the data actually says now i originally posted a video about helmets and guardian caps in 2022 at the time there were two published studies with guardian caps today in 2024 it's august 2024 when i filmed this there are only four published studies so let's dive into the updated research on guardian caps and let's start with the claim that the nfl is making so with describing the 2022 preseason which is when the guardian caps kind of made their debut in the nfl the NFL described a 50% reduction in sports-related concussion when compared with the averages from 2018, 2019, and 2021. Nonetheless, the data behind this claim have never been published. So the NFL is talking about reducing concussion rates by 50%. With the 2024 published data, do Guardian Caps do what the NFL and what the Guardian Cap company says they do? Do they reduce the force and do they reduce rates of concussion? Let's start with helmets in general. I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty here because we're talking about Guardian Caps, but I do at least want to mention helmets because the Guardian Cap is going over a helmet. It's covered covering the player's helmets. What does the data show about helmets and concussions? So please, please, please don't shoot the messenger here, but helmets don't actually do anything to prevent mild traumatic brain injuries or concussions. Helmets do prevent more severe forms of traumatic brain injury, and they do prevent external trauma like face or skull fractures. So we do want you to wear your helmets, but in that same breath, don't expect a helmet to prevent a concussion. So if you want the references on that, you want to deeper dive into the data on helmets, go back to my original helmets and guardian cap review from 2022. But that's what I'm going to say about helmets for now. So with that, we know that helmets could obviously use some work in the concussion prevention department. So enter Guardian Caps. These were created in 2010 and from their website, they say, quote, the Guardian Cap is the leading soft shell helmet cover engineered for impact reduction. It brings a padded soft shell layer to the outside of decades old hard shell helmet and reduces impact up to 33%. So they claim it to tap into physics of like, let's reduce force one layer at a time. We've got the soft shell, we've got the helmet, we've got the skull. And by kind of reducing the force on the way to the brain, we're going to reduce impact damage and possibly reduce concussion, which is a great claim and a great idea. So how does that translate out into the real world gameplay? And honestly, where does that 33% number come from, that 33% reduction? So we've got four studies. We've got two lab based studies and we've got two game and player based studies so said another way we've got two in the lab and two in the world two kind of nerdy bench science and two sort of how does this actually play out outside of the lab so let's start in the lab what did the lab study show us so we've got one from 2017 and we got one from 2021 so the 2017 study researchers dropped helmets with and without guardian caps so it's this form of drop testing so they dropped helmets with and without guardian caps to determine if the guardian cap actually reduced force and they measured the helmet movement and the impact severity to assess the caps effectiveness the researchers looked at two main things to see if the Guardian Caps worked. They look at the GAD severity index, or the GSI, and they looked at peak acceleration. So the GAD severity index is a score that tells us how severe a head impact is. The higher the score, the worse the head impact. The problem with this is we can't really clinically tie this to anything. There's no like threshold that says at this GSI we see concussion and at this we don't. But regardless, we know that helmets have to go through this testing to see can it tolerate sufficient amounts of force or enough force. And they found that the Guardian Cap actually didn't really affect the GSI score all that much at all. They also looked at peak acceleration acceleration, which measures how quickly the helmet moves when it's hit. And again, the guardian cap did not make a big difference here either, except in two positions, when the helmet got hit in the rear or the back, or when it got hit kind of on the backside or the rear boss. So peak acceleration did decrease in the rear and the rear boss positions, but womp womp, 
these are actually the least common sites for players to be hit playing football. So we reduced force, but where players don't actually ever get hit. And the decrease was only 10 to 11%. So we still haven't found that 33% number, but we're only one study in. So overall, the results of the 2017 lab study showed that the Guardian cap didn't actually significantly improve the helmet's ability to protect the head from impact. Let's go to 2021. It's a different study. This study compared two add-ons. So it compared the Guardian cap versus a ProTech cap. And they used seven different models of football helmets because players might buy different helmets. So let's put the cap on different helmets and let's try two different caps. Let's see the Guardian cap compared to this older ProTech cap. So they did two kinds of tests. First, they use a special machine called a pneumatic ram to basically shoot a padded weight at a helmet on a fake head. So they just shot a weight at a crash test dummy and they tested if the extra padding slowed down the movement when it hit. Second test, they used another machine to smash two helmets together to go helmet to helmet contact and they tested if the extra padding changed how the helmets hit each other and if it affected the chance of neck injury. So what did they find? They found that both ProTech and Guardian Cap did reduce the amount of head movement in most tests, which is good for preventing concussion. So yay. That's what we want. The important numbers here are that the Guardian Cap reduced a measurement of head movement, so head acceleration response metric, also called HARM, which is kind of funny. So the Guardian Cap reduced HARM by an average of 9%, whereas the ProTech Cap ProTech helmet cap reduced harm by about 5%. Clinically relevant note here, the best improvements were seen with helmets that didn't protect well on their own. So said a different way, helmets that already did a good job at reducing force without any add-ons weren't actually helped that much when you added the Guardian cap or the ProTech cap. So helmets that already did a good job at baseline didn't really get improved with this add-on, with the soft shell add-on. So in theory, reducing forces by about 9% may reduce concussion risk. But again, we still haven't seen that published 33%. And we still don't know if it's all that helpful because NFL players are probably wearing good helmets to begin with. So to recap the lab data, we got three points. One, when we smash and crash test dummies and helmets together, the Guardian cap may reduce forces about 10%. That's cool. But it's less effective in helmets that are already high quality, like the NFL probably uses. And the forces may be most reduced in the places where the players are least likely to be hit. Hmm. So now let's look at the football data. Let's look at when we actually put these Guardian caps on playing, moving human football players, what happens? So we got a 2023 study that looked at 10 Division I NCAA college players. So researchers wanted to see if the extra guardian cap padding on the football helmets actually prevented injuries. So we had 10 D1 players that were wearing special helmets with sensors inside. So five players had the guardian cap, five players did not. And the sensors measured, it was head impact telemetry. So they measured acceleration and impact and all this other stuff. And they went through 14 practices with the caps and sensors. And then the sensors measured how hard their heads were hit. And the researchers also filmed the practice to see, okay, this, the sensor recorded measurements, what did that hit actually look look like what you know like what kind of hit did the player take and then they compared the data to look at if the extra padding made a difference drum roll quote overall the peak linear acceleration and peak rotational acceleration between the shell so the guardian cap and control were equivocal across helmet location observed direction starting stance and closing distance gameplay factors so basically the guardian cap and the control no difference. If we get nitty gritty here, there may have been lower rotational forces. So there may have been a benefit, lower rotational forces starting from a three and four point stance. But the flip side of that, there was actually greater rotational forces. So worse rotational forces from a two point stance. So repeat it more simply. And to quote the researchers directly, based on our preliminary findings, protective soft shell padding did not reduce head linear or rotational acceleration among a subset of college football players. So our first kind of real world study says the guardian cap doesn't do much of anything compared to regular helmets. So now we got the 2024 study and this was actually the one that you'll see if you look it up guardian caps and pubmed this was duplicated so there's a preprint in 2023 that was kind of officially published in the journal of athletic training in 2024 and this study involved 25 male ncaa division one college football players who are identified by their coaches as having the potential to experience a lot of head impacts over the course of a season so what they did is they used six kind of standardized practices workouts in the middle of the preseason for testing three of the practices they used traditional helmets and then three of the practices they had guardian caps and the whole time they had instrumented mouth guards that could detect the peak linear and angular acceleration of these impacts. In this time, they captured and analyzed 809 unique video verified head impacts across the various players, positions, and playing time roles. So what did they find? I'm going to quote this one as well. Quote, the major outcome was that the guardian caps did not reduce or attenuate the peak linear acceleration or the peak angular acceleration or alter the total number of head impacts during the six closely matched practice sessions. So said again, and quoted from a different part of the study, consistent with the limited literature on guardian caps, we found no reduction in peak angular acceleration, linear acceleration, or total impacts when the guardian caps were affixed to traditional helmets and collegiate American football players. So what is the end conclusion from these four studies? One, lab studies show guardian caps can slightly reduce head impact forces, but 
that this effect is less pronounced in high quality helmets and occurred in places least likely to be hit. And when we go to the real world football settings, no significant reduction in head impact number or metrics were observed. And very, very important, we have zero data reporting decreased concussion rates. We have lab data showing minimal impact reductions. We have player data showing no impact effects. And we have zero data showing any changes in concussion numbers. And that is arguably the most important and most missing metric from this research right now. Now, this is not meant to stoke polarity online. This is just data. <laughs> My recommendation as a clinician and as a guy who treats concussion and post-concussion day in and day out, I want you to wear your helmet. I want you to replace your helmet every couple of years. But for right now, you could probably save your money on the add-ons for now. Like maybe that research will get better. While helmets and add-ons cannot entirely prevent concussions, you still want to prevent face fractures, skull fractures, more severe forms of TBI. You definitely want to wear your helmet when you're competing in sport, when you're cycling, contact sports. Any chance you want to wear your helmet, you should. Please, please, please remember for the folks who think that football, ice hockey, rugby are just barbaric sports, we could cancel all sports tomorrow and the dent on concussion and PCS would be far, far less than you think. Most concussions actually occur from car accidents and accidental falls, not contact sports. And additionally, we've got benefits from sports at the youth and community levels, as well as even in like the NFL and professional football. There's benefits that can be their own separate video. So... What I want to say, for those of you who think it's barbaric and guardian caps are kind of a saving grace, pump your brakes. The data doesn't show that at all. And on the other side of things, for those of you who think guardian caps are stupid and pointless, also pump your brakes. We still need helmets for other reasons. And we need research like this to keep pushing the player safety forward. We learn more from what we get wrong than what we get right. So I am happy to see this research out there. And that is what we know about the guardian caps in August 2024. I appreciate you sticking around. If you enjoyed this or learned something from it, you probably also enjoy or maybe learn something from this one as well. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark, and I appreciate you watching.